Hello, I'm Dr. Mimi Munn, and I am the professor and chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the USA College of Medicine. Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Hewitt. I'm a second year resident um, in obstetrics and gynecology. And we're here today to talk a little bit about the COVID vaccine and uh, what it means in women's health and in particular to women who are pregnant or contemplating pregnancy. So this has been kind of a, an interesting experience um, because we've had a number of, of uh, healthcare providers and, and physicians that I work with who this uh, uh, question, an answer to this question is very, very important. And Dr. Hude being one of those who, um, we actually did sit and have some long conversations about you know, what, what the data show about this vaccine in pregnancy and was this the right decision for her. And she put a lot of thought um, in, into her decision um, and, and I very much respect that and I'm glad to have her here today to, to talk about um, her journey to making that decision. So, um, Christine, did you have some uh, questions about the vaccine and, and uh, what, what the, the data show and, and uh, what it means for a pregnant woman to get the vaccine? Absolutely. I think there was a lot of questions I had initially um, when I started looking into this when we found out that we were going to be one of the first sites to receive the COVID vaccine. Um, and I wanted to start researching into it. Um, I know one of the things was, you know, we always learn starting in medical school what vaccines are safe in pregnancy and which are not. Um, and so I know one of the ones I had was obviously the big one, is this safe in pregnancy? Um, typically when we learn about in med medical school, we learn about killed virus versus live virus. Um, this was actually the first time I had heard of an mRNA vaccine. Right, so. right. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting and it's a hard question to answer, you know, and, and that's most women's first question is, is this safe in pregnancy? And, you know, we don't have a large amount of data from the, the trials that have been performed um, because they uh, excluded pregnant women in those trials. Um, but we do know a little bit about the science behind the messenger RNA vaccines because uh, um, although it's, people say this is a new technology, it, it apparently is not. They've been studying these messenger RNA vaccines for years and years. And so um, I already had a very good understanding of, of how it works and, and how it's delivered. Um, so, you know, we, we understand the science behind it. Um, we just don't know what it means in pregnant women. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the safety, um, you know, because this is a, a, a little piece of RNA that goes into the cell and sort of um, uh, triggers the cell to make this uh, spike protein and then it's quickly degraded, you know, we don't think that, that you're getting virus. Mm -hmm. So that's the good news is this really doesn't contain virus. Right. So I think that was like one of the things I was um, wondering about initially. Um, I know I had heard that there, while the trials didn't include any pregnant women, there were women that became pregnant during the trial. So we will have data on that later on going forward and with the women um, that chose to get vaccinated while they were pregnant. Um, another thing just was, you know, as far as I plan to breastfeed um, afterwards and, you know, is, is, is it safe in breastfeeding? And again, I think it's kind of similar type of answer. We're not Right, right. Again, because the pregnant women and breastfeeding mm -hmm. women were excluded from those studies, we don't have data yet that, mm -hmm. sh that um, proved beyond a doubt that it's safe in pregnancy. But again, looking at the science, mm -hmm. um, you know, what you're doing is mounting an antibody response to this protein, and that can only be good for a baby because you pass that, you know, hopefully in breast milk and mm -hmm. will actually help be protective is what we think will happen. So I, I really don't see any problem with women who are breastfeeding certainly um, having the vaccine. Mm -hmm. What do you think about um, timing, like early trimester versus, like I was in my second trimester when right. I decided. Yeah, and again, not a lot of data um, uh, about, uh, you know, is it safe in, in, a, in a particular trimester. Um, you know, if, if I were making that decision, I think I would weigh, you know, what is my exposure and my risk to COVID at, um, as a healthcare provider? Um, because what we do know about COVID in pregnancy is that the pregnant women may indeed have more risk and more mm -hmm. adverse outcomes. You know, the data are starting to show that they're at increased risk for needing hospitalization, mm -hmm. um, needing ventilator support, and there even seems to be a slightly higher mortality rate. Mm -hmm. So if I were, a, you know, a, a healthcare worker 
in, you know, in the front line and certainly in the COVID unit um, and I were in the first trimester, I think I would seriously consider getting the vaccine because, you know, I certainly did, don't want to become ill from COVID mm -hmm. and end up very sick and, and uh, on a ventilator or even death. Right. Um, so again, you know, because of the, the science of it, we, it, we don't think that, that any viral particles are crossing the placenta and getting to the baby, that maybe the, the even beneficial antibodies mm -hmm. will be what, what gets to the baby. And that's, you know, we know are, are, um, are good things. Mm -hmm. so. There are, <laughs> and it's, it's funny that you mentioned about the trimesters because mm -hmm. I think there were some internet rumors about mm -hmm. uh, about it causing miscarriage, mm -hmm. and I, I th you know, I think these reports were not certainly not founded on science, and, mm -hmm. and maybe some of the people that came forward to report on it weren't mm -hmm. who they said they were. Um, there is certainly you know no data that this causes pregnancy loss. Mm -hmm. Um, we have, you know, some data from the animal studies that were performed um, um, before the, the vaccine rollout. And right now, the, the reproductive studies done in animals are very encouraging and don't mm -hmm. seem to show, um, show an increased risk of miscarriage. When they've looked at, there was probably about 35 women who got the vaccine um, during the trial. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they uh, weren't supposed to, but they <laughs> actually did get pregnant. And, you know, there, again, there seems to be no increased risk for mm -hmm. miscarriage. Um, from the vaccine and those, those uh, 30, 35 women who got the vaccine. Also, if you look at women who actually got COVID mm -hmm. um, and they got the virus as well as mounted an antibody mm -hmm. response, there doesn't even seem to be an increased risk for miscarriage in people that actually got COVID. So, uh, you know, we have no reason to think that this is gonna cause an increased risk for miscarriage in pregnant women. Um, um, or prevent fertility um, issues, you know, cause them to not be able to get pregnant. Um, so, you know, that was another part of that, that, that was another thing internet I rumor. Too, right, yeah. right. <laughs> you know, what we do know s disturbingly is that men uh, may be affected if they get COVID. Mm -hmm. and, and there's actually been a couple of studies that have come out looking at, I think it's sperm count, mm -hmm. um, and, and male fertility may actually be affect, mm -hmm. affected by COVID infection. So that's a little bit worrisome. But certainly no, no data to suggest that the vaccine right would cause um, uh, an inability to get pregnant or right. pregnancy loss. And um, actually, um, Dr. Munn and I were just discussing, I'm on my reproductive endocrinology and fertility rotation right now, and we actually did see one of those male infertility patients post-COVID um, during this rotation. Wow. Um, the other thing that was, you know, interesting um, or just important, I guess, is um, the, you know, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine did come out also with a position statement similar to right. what SMFM and ACOG said, which was, the, you know, that they don't believe that this hurts fertility in any way. And right. I would say they have a vested interest in that. Yes, in yes. That, yeah, so. and one thing that, w that we find, you know, encouraging as, as OBGYNs is, yes, that all of our major societies, mm -hmm. like uh, the reproductive medicine mm -hmm. folks, um, the American College of OBGYN, the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, are all very mm -hmm. much... Um, you know, proponents of, of having a woman make a decision right. about getting the vaccine in this shared decision-making fa fashion. And if it, it mm -hmm. seems like it's right for them to go ahead right. and do that. Um, so again, I, I, right. I, I get some comfort <laughs> in knowing that yes. our colleagues across the country are, mm -hmm. are very much on board and believe in the science as well, so definitely.